very simple question to start. Um, what does this wine glass and a wind turbine share in common? Well, they're obviously very different objects and very different structures for a number of different reasons, but there is a physical phenomenon known as resonance, which is the one thing that's in common between them. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the idea of a person's voice being capable of breaking this glass. Correct? Probably. Yeah, you've seen videos, I'm sure. Um, that's basically due to resonance, and it's a very simple, simple concept. If I'm able to ping this wine glass, it makes a sound. Now, the sound that this wine glass is making is because it's vibrating at what's known as its natural frequency. Now, if I could recreate that exact sound with my voice, which I'm not going to try today because my soprano days are far behind me, um, basically what will happen is the sound waves in my voice will meet the glass at the same rate that it naturally wants to vibrate at, which will cause those vibrations to become larger. And since glass is quite brittle, uh, it can lead them to shatter. So when we look at wind turbines, these are obviously incredibly different structures for many different reasons. They're very dissimilar to glass. But they actually act in a remarkably similar manner. Wind turbines, like all large civil engineering structures, actually do vibrate at a natural frequency. This means that they, they sway back and forth at a specific rate in a given unit of time. Now, these vibrations are incredibly small. You wouldn't even notice them if you're standing right beside the turbine, for example, but they are there. Today, we're building a lot of these turbines. We have a, a renewable energy crisis as such. We need to find new energy sources and prevent global warming from getting worse. So we're actually building a lot more of them off the coast where wind energy is actually better. It tends to be breezier offshore than it is onshore. Now, there is a massive problem when you start to do this. Um, wind turbines, when they're being located off the, off the coast, will meet with sea waves, which doesn't happen on land, obviously. Now, waves in the ocean, similar to sound waves to a wine glass, will actually hit off these turbines at specific rates or frequencies. So you'll have a number of waves basically hitting a turbine in a given unit of time. Now, what will happen if the waves hit the turbine at the same rate that the turbine naturally wants to vibrate at itself? Well, then we'll get the same concept of the wine glass shattering. We'll induce resonance in the structure. And instead of these small amplitude vibrations, which are not harmful to the structure, we might get larger sways, where the structure will sway much larger vibrations, which can be very detrimental to both the stability and the lifespan of these structures. Now, luckily for turbines, on the one hand, they're not made of glass, so they don't tend to shatter, which is good. And on the other hand, civil engineers are actually really good at knowing what the natural frequency of these structures will be. And they generally tend to design them in such a way that they can't be affected by resonance. So there are just a number of things that actually affect what the frequency of these structures can be. Um, simple things like changing the weight of the turbine, changing its height, uh, the materials used to make the tower, if they're concrete, if they're steel, these all contribute to what the natural frequency of these structures will be. If we take a simple example of a pole stuck in concrete and we place a small weight on top of it and displace it slightly, it'll vibrate back and forth at a certain rate. Now, if we remove that weight and put on a heavier weight and do the same thing, it'll move back and forth at a much slower rate. So simply changing the weight on top of this pole has an effect on what the natural frequency will be. So generally speaking, because we have a very good idea as to the frequency or rate at which waves propagate through the oceans, we can design these structures in such a way that they won't be affected by this resonant phenomenon. But there is one problem. One of the major governing factors for the natural frequency of structures is not just the structure itself, but what the structure is fixed to. So generally, these structures are obviously placed in the ground, where the hardness or the softness of the ground will also have an effect on the natural frequency. And this tends to be something that structural engineers tend to ignore a little bit. So if you can imagine that softer soil is less capable of like clamping the structure in place than harder soil, this will have an effect on the frequency response of the structure. So if we take the simple example of the pole stuck in concrete again and remove it and place it into soft soil, you can imagine that the soil is less capable of holding it there, so the frequency will be different. Now, this generally isn't a problem either when we're building these structures on land, because it's quite relatively straightforward to work out how hard or soft the soil is. There are a number of tests that can be performed, which I won't go into detail about today. Um, the only difference with putting them off the shore is these tests can still be performed to a point, but they're a lot more expensive is the major problem, and they're a lot more difficult. So in the future, we do have a crisis with these turbines. We are building more of them. We're going to be building larger wind farms, larger turbines, more numerous farms, further off the shore in deeper and deeper waters, where the accurate assessment of these ground conditions will become one of the more pertinent issues in ensuring that this resonant phenomenon doesn't happen. The example that will be given is that in the design office, the civil engineer is designing his turbine to have a certain uh, natural frequency based, based on an assumed hardness or softness 
of the soil at the installation location. But what happens when they encounter that the soil is actually softer than expected and this turbine is now in place? Well, because these turbines are going to be quite large, and the larger they get, generally speaking, the lower their frequency becomes. And because C waves exist at a certain frequency band, the errors will become smaller, and the, the fact that the structure could actually end up being affected by resonance could definitely become a problem. So just to conclude very briefly, if you happen to be singing out of tune or at the exact required frequency to break the wine glass, that generally doesn't tend to be much of a problem, because wine glasses, unless you have very expensive ones, tend to be quite cheap. But when we're investing millions and millions of euro in these offshore wind farms to give ourselves a renewable energy future, we could end up with a very big problem if we don't pay attention to some of the smaller details. Thank you.